In this video, we will be learning about the ecosystem, its components, its types, its functions and the three important terms that is food chain, food web and ecological pyramid. Please watch this video carefully as environmental studies is a compulsory subject as per UGC and ecosystem is one of the topics under this. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kumkum Khawas and welcome to my channel Wow Chemistry. Starting with the definition of ecosystem, ecosystem is made up of two words, eco means community and system means interaction. That is, an ecosystem is any geographical area where group of communities of organisms like plants and animals as well as physical environment like weather and landscape work together to support the life system. There are basically two interlinked forces which work together in ecosystem, one is the flow of energy and the other is the cycling of nutrients. This can be shown with the help of this diagram where the energy as well as the nutrient is flowing from the producers to the consumers to the decomposers and then to the inorganic nutrient pool and then again to the producers. So if you have any doubt regarding this diagram, please put your doubts in the comment section. The best example to describe ecosystem is an aquarium which most of you must be having at your homes. Moving to the structure of ecosystem, it is composed of abiotic components meaning the non-living components and the biotic components meaning the living components. The abiotic components are further classified as climatic factors and edaphic factors whereas the biotic components are categorized as producers, consumers and decomposers. So here is the list of abiotic components, climatic factors including rain, sunlight, wind, temperature, humidity, adaptive factors including soil factors such as pH, inorganic minerals, organic matters, oxygen. If you have any doubt about any of these terms, you can put your doubts in the comment section. The biotic components consist of producers. Producer means autotrophs that means they can prepare their food by their own. The best example is the plants and some of the bacteria. Next is the consumers which are also called as heterotrophs. They depend on the other organisms for food. Or you can say the consumers depend directly or indirectly on producers for their food. Next is the decomposers, meaning saprophytes. These depend on the dead and decaying organic matters, which includes fungi and bacteria. The consumers can be further classified as the primary consumers, which are generally herbivores directly dependent on the producer, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers and quaternary consumers, which may be carnivores or omnivores and they are indirectly dependent on the producers. The secondary consumers feed on primary consumers the tertiary consumers feed on secondary consumers, the quaternary consumers feed on the tertiary consumers. We will be explaining each of them, them later on. Next is the types of ecosystem broadly classified as the terrestrial ecosystem meaning land based ecosystem and the next is the aquatic ecosystem meaning water based ecosystem. The terrestrial ecosystem are further classified as forest ecosystem grassland ecosystem, mountain ecosystem and the desert ecosystem and the aquatic ecosystem are classified as the freshwater ecosystem and the marine ecosystem. One by one I will explain each of them. The first one is the forest ecosystem. As the name suggests it is a forest. Therefore it contains abundant of flora that is plants and trees densely populated trees and the living organisms such as carnivores including Lions, tigers and herbivores including deer, goats are found over here. Apart from these biotic components, you can also find the abiotic components for example air, humidity, landscape, soils are also found here. So together they make up an ecosystem. Next is the grassland ecosystem. It mainly comprises of grasses with little shrubs and trees. Basically insects and herbivores animals are the main organisms found over here. Next is the mountain ecosystem. These are generally devoid of trees, consist of mountains which are generally found in the cold climate and generally covered with snow. Animals which have thick furs 
For example, bears are generally found over here which have a long hibernation period. The last one is the desert ecosystem. So these ecosystem are found where the rainfall is very very scarce scarce and the flora and fauna are not very much developed due to the very high temperature and small shrubs and bushes like cactus are found over here animals like cap camels or some reptiles are found over here the second category is the aquatic ecosystem which includes marine ecosystem this one is considered as the largest ecosystem because most of the earth comprises of water and as seas and oceans and it has a larger salt and minerals content algae sharks corals fish etc live over here and as you can uh, find out that the abiotic components for example water humidity dissolved oxygen are also present over here so as a whole they also make up an ecosystem the next aquatic ecosystem is the freshwater ecosystem it basically comprises the lentic ecosystem the lotic ecosystem and the wetland ecosystem lentic ecosystem are the slow moving or still water like ponds or lakes lotic ecosystem are fast moving ecosystems like rivers and wetland ecosystems are the saturated soil ecosystem reptiles amphibians fish species etc live over here now continuously we are talking about the flow of energy and the flow of nutrients so basically first we will learn about the food chain so chain chain meaning a linear sequence so it is a linear sequence of organisms through which energy and nutrients flow from one organism to another so here we will take few examples to learn about the food chain for example in the first example you can see that the fish is feeding on the grass whereas the eagle feeds on the fish so this ecosystem consists of three components or three living beings rather you can say the second is consisting of four the rabbit feeds on the carrot the fox feeds on the rabbit whereas the lion feeds on the fox and then again in this you can find out this food chain consists of five living components the grasshopper feeds on the grass the frog feeds on the grasshopper the snake feeds on the frog and the hawk feeds on the snake next term is the food web as the word web suggests that it is a kind of network so it is a network of many interconnected food chains the food chains that i have already described which involves again the flow of energy and nutrients so here you can see that a large number of food chains are present over here which are interconnected to one another for example if you'll see here closely you will find that this rabbit is feeding on this tree and this rabbit is being eaten by this fox and this fox is being eaten by this tiger or by this lion again the goat also feeds on this tree the goat is again eaten by this fox the mouse also eats this tree the mouse is eaten by the snake the snake is eaten by the hawk the mouse is also eaten by the cat and the mouse is also eaten by the owl the cat is again eaten by the tiger similarly the goat is eaten by the tiger or the lion so in this way you can see the red arrow showing that which animal is being eaten by which animal or which organism you can say so this way you can explain the food web the last is the ecological pyramid so ecological pyramid as you can see pyramid pyramid meaning some triangle kind of shape so it is basically a graphical representation of the relationship between different organisms in an ecosystem and each of these bars indicate a trophic level or you can see the position of the organism so if you are considering that these are the producers then these are the primary consumers which are feeding on the producer then the secondary consumers which feed on the primary consumer and then is the tertiary consumers which feed on the secondary consumers and again you can also find out that some quaternary consumers which again lies at the top above the tertiary consumers uh, feed on the tertiary consumers so you will find that as you will move towards the upward sides it becomes narrower so you can say that ecosystem supports a larger diversity of life at its this position compared to the top position 
so moving to the last portion of the video the functions of the ecosystem so here i've listed four functions of ecosystem number 1 it regulates the essential ecological processes which is necessary for supporting the life system it is responsible for the cycling of nutrients it also regulates the flow of energy it also maintains the balance among the various trophic levels i hope you must have understood this video thanks for your support if you like this video then please click the like button share this video and subscribe to my channel wow chemistry